Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne, Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Alan Cochran. <laughs> Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of former Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott in typical <laughs> statesman like pose. <laughs> but what does PTSD stand for? Put that sausage down. <laughs> Is it, is it Prescott to swallow Dorset? <laughs> Could it be Posh's terrible surgery disaster? <laughs> is it just pies, Twixes, sausages, dumplings? <laughs> that is essentially the mother load Prescott is fat, isn't it? Or is it no, Prescott? No, the mother load is pulmonary thrombosis, sudden death. <laughs> I'm going to have to steer you towards a correct answer. Prescott tries speed dating. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. Is it Prescott? Have we got that right? Prescott, you're... you're, you're, you're pre yes! Yeah. Is it Prescott to stand down? It's oh, exactly right. the correct answer. Very good. <laughs> the answer I was looking for was Prescott to stand down. refers to the 69-year-old's announcement that he will retire as an MP at the next election after 37 years in the Commons. He's expected to write his memoirs and enter the House of Lords. 69? He doesn't look bad. Actually, doesn't look bad for 69. He looks like he's finally found a taste he doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> he's all right, though, Prescott, I reckon. You're he's OK with Prescott? I've got a fan of Prescott. Yeah, yeah, good guy. He's gonna, we're going to suffer as comedians once he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said brilliantly, after he'd had the affair, after he'd had the affair and he'd gone to the ranch of that bloke in the States, but people were mostly thinking about the affair, he went on the Today programme and he said, I want to be judged by how I am on the job. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see his memoirs. It's going to be like the Doomsday Book of Food. <laughs> 1997 was a very important year for me because Marathon changed its name to Snickers. <laughs> Is it called Sex, Lies and Battenberg Cake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Life of Pies. <laughs> He's going to walk into a lot of directorships now, isn't he? Gangsters, Free Bento, Nando's. <laughs> what I like about Prescott is he'll use the money that he makes getting onto the gravy train to create an actual gravy train. <laughs> Paul, we'll be exhausted with fat jokes soon enough, I think. But brilliantly, yeah. he's, the, he's now got a job in uh, Europe, hasn't he? He's yes, some he representative has, yeah. to some European uh, sort of parliament thing, in which he will have the distinction of being the only English politician ever to be simultaneously translated into English. <laughs> It also used to say it was very... They used to really panic. Every summer there was a thing about how, when Tony Blair was on holiday, John Prescott was left in charge of the country and everybody went, oh, my God, Prescott's in charge of the country. And you think, actually, that's much less dangerous than him leaving the country on some parliament, like John Prescott sorting out Middle East peace, going, I'm here, I'm here to sort out Middle East peace, but, frankly, if somebody hits you, twat them. <laughs> So the gist is, when Blair goes away, he was basically the summer prime minister. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nice. Nice way of putting yeah. it. He, this is the first summer in which he hasn't been summer prime minister, and we've had foot and mouth terrorist attacks and giant flooding across the country. Uh, Are you suggesting so, he's some form of overlord? Uh, I, <laughs> that, that seemingly he was quietly playing a blinder uh, for all these years. Yeah, he could have prevented the flooding if he just lay down next to the river. <laughs> <laughs> a human flood bank. <laughs> Prime that Minister. doesn't stop flooding, that just moves flooding further yeah. up the river. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't know as much about flood defences as you do. <laughs> Honestly, though, if a, if a new London flood barrier is going to cost 20 billion quid, it's worth just dropping him in and see if it works. Yeah. Well, so it is. Should we, should we wedge him in first and see how yeah. it works? Yeah. <laughs> in the, um, although he was an MP for 37 years, every t because he used to be a steward on uh, cruise ships, yeah. that's where he started, he was a steward on cruise ships. Nicholas Soames is the big, huge, fat one <laughs> from the Conservative Party. Every time John Prescott walked into the chamber to make a point, Nicholas Soames went, gin and tonic, please, Stuart. <laughs> Nicholas Soames, of course, who was described, wasn't it, when he was like, somebody said, oh, what was it like having sex with Nicholas Soames? And they said, it was like a wardrobe falling on you with a very small key. <laughs> <laughs> It's an amazing video from MFI, that. Just like <laughs> that. Falling wardrobes. Um, 
What Fine. won't, while we're discussing these things, what won't Camilla Parker Bowles be doing on Friday? Not going to the Diana tribute. It is, yeah. We're not the sure. reason being, of course, is that she shouldn't go. Obviously, yeah. you know, she was the one who's partly responsible for them breaking up in the first place. Who else are they thinking of inviting that's going to be totally inappropriate? Is James Hewitt going to be there? <laughs> are the paparazzi going to be there? Are they going to invite the safety bloke from Mercedes Benz? <laughs> So she's not responsible for it. No, exactly. you know, it seems like it's, you know, she was responsible for the breakup of the marriage, but you know, she's not responsible for the death of Dan. I don't she think wouldn't it... have been in Paris if it hadn't been for her. I don't think it's... Yes, she what? would. What? <laughs> what? Did, did, did Camilla book her flight? <laughs> <laughs> As long as Camilla, like, doesn't arrive at the party on the back of a scooter taking photographs, I don't really see <laughs> what's so distasteful. But, but once again, it's meant that the Daily Express has been able to have headlines every week yeah. on Diana. I mean, who buys the Daily Express? Who is... She's been dead for ten years. Who goes, well, she has been dead for ten years, but I wonder if in the last 24 hours something topical has happened. <laughs> Good. What would be good would be if, on the day of the memorial, the Daily Express just didn't mention it. Yeah. <laughs> They've literally mentioned it every day, yeah, apart yeah. from the early edition on 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> already have, don't we, the Diana Memorial, which was supposed to, you know, show the joy and grief of her life. And I think that it's uh, succeeded completely. You know, you've got the joy, haven't you, of splashing about in the fountain, and the grief of slipping over on the leaves <laughs> and smacking your head. <laughs> what could be a better tribute than not, that? Not to mention the fact that it's shaped like a racetrack. Is it? I've never yeah. seen yeah. it. It's brilliant. We've got this horrible fountain, and Paris got that wonderful, beautiful, please slow down in the tunnel sign. <laughs> <laughs> It's difficult for Camilla to get it right, though, isn't it? She can't go to the concert, she can't go to the tribute day. It's hard to think of a time when it will be right for her to attend any Diana event. You know, oh, and here is Camilla looking resplendent at the Diana paintballing afternoon. <laughs> What I always found particularly funny is the way in which <laughs> the public get angry as if, as if they have any say in this. Yeah. As if, you know, no, she shouldn't be queen. No, it's a monarchy. You don't get to pick. <laughs> That's the way a monarchy works. <laughs> it's a, if you want a presidency, vote for a president. But you're either one way or the other. You can't go, oh, we should have her. Uh, <laughs> this she is essentially, in this situation, she is that relative who you invite to the wedding in the fervent hope that they can read through the lukewarm tone of the card <laughs> and go, let's not go. Um, <laughs> you go yes, two more seats for my college friends. <laughs> Do you know why she's not going? It's because the Queen's advisor told the Queen that she shouldn't go. And you find that that must be such a dull job being the Queen's advisor. Imagine that. <laughs> Honey or jam on the tap? Jam. You always criticise Camilla's possible attendance, by the way. Was yes. it Ray Mears, the survivalist? <laughs> <laughs> when, when pressed for comment, uh, <laughs> no, it was, obviously it was, it was the Daily Mail possibly took it too far. Uh, the Daily Mail's quote was, if, but her attendants said, had Camilla attended on Friday, they would all have been damned! <laughs> that's, not, that's not over the top in any way whatsoever. Do you know, I've done a computer programme that works out what the Daily Mail's average headline is, and it's asylum seekers carry a new type of AIDS that lowers house prices. <laughs> Well, who, who won't be there? Do you know who won't be there? Ray Mears. Ray Mears no, won't be no, there. No, no, no. Ray Mears won't be there. Osama Bin Laden won't, won't be there. Be there. It's a much me. longer list than who will be yeah, there. It is. <laughs> the Queen won't be there, because she's on her holidays. How does the Queen know if she's on holiday? She doesn't fucking do anything. <laughs> We're going to India next week. Is it work or a holiday? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I wander around waving at people. <laughs> it could well be work. <laughs> people do love Diana, which is why they've got the Diana Society. She was voted, wasn't she, the third greatest Britain of all time. Now, I did have a, a few problems with that particular poll. Number 17, greatest Britons of all time, Michael Crawford. <laughs> right? Just ahead of Michael Faraday, Stephen Hawking and Alexander Fleming. Right? <laughs> so the great British public had obviously gone, well, the invention of penicillin, electricity and the Big Bang Theory, not bad. <laughs> 
but not quite as good as roller skating underneath the lorry whilst wearing a tank top going, ooh, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hugh and Alan. <laughs> now we play a round called Monsters of Mock. <laughs> <laughs> this game involves Alan, Andy, Frankie and Ed, so if you could make your way to the performance area, uh -huh. please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winner as a team are judged to the best stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is kids. Who wants to come in on that? Ed Byrne. <coughs> uh, I had a great window recently into what it's like to have a child. I was on the Tube in London, and there was a woman there with her kid. And I know it was her kid, because the kid said the word mum about 500 times. <laughs> You know one of those kids that just keeps going off like an alarm clock? Mum, 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 And every now and again she'd go, what? But it was just like pressing snooze. <laughs> be off again a few minutes. And every time she'd say, what? The kid would say something really innocuous and boring. Like, you could almost see the woman weighing it up in her head. Was that more or less irritating than the sound of it going, mum, mum, mum? <laughs> like, mum, 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 what? That man has a hat. <laughs> She did say this, though. She said, the funniest thing I've ever overheard on public transport, about the eighth time the kid did it. The kid's going, Mum, 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 Mum. And without even looking, the woman just went, I can't believe how happy I was the first time you said that word. <laughs> well, <there it> is. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The topic is the smoking ban. Alan Cock. Uh, I'm a big fan of the smoking ban. As a uh, non-smoker and a keen drinker, for me, the end of the Blair government was just wonderful because they brought in 24-hour drinking and banned smoking. There were some nights where it was like I had my own Prime Minister. I was <laughs> just sitting in watching the news and Blair would be looking out going, go on, Alan, have a good night out. <laughs> Drink till four without going to a nightclub if you want. When you wake up the next day, just put the clothes straight on. <laughs> you won't even smell. It's wonderful. We're saving about three pounds a month on soap powder, which I don't know about you, but I'm putting directly into a lager fund. <laughs> but my main tipple of choice when I go out is the uh, bottles of Sol or Corona, cos you know it comes with a little wedge of lime in it and that counts towards your five a day. <laughs> Very good, Alan Cochran. <laughs> OK, that leaves it with Andy and Frankie. Let's spin the wheel. The next topic is television. Frankie. <laughs> the, only, uh, the only TV award I've ever been nominated for was a Scottish BAFTA. A <laughs> Scottish BAFTA. It's like hearing that the animals have their own Olympics. <laughs> you hear all this stuff about TV being faked. Of course it's faked. It's all faked. You know that documentary a couple of weeks ago about tribal warfare among monkeys? That was all filmed in a Yates's wine lodge in Dundee. <laughs> Comic relief is faked. Everybody in Africa is fine. <laughs> I saw a documentary about Paris Hilton, and this could just be a story, but it said that when she was in jail, the warders put sperm into her porridge. That must have been a horrible moment for her. Oh, there's porridge in this. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Andy, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. Global warming is what that <laughs> represents. Apparently, right, we will have more extremes of weather. Now, we're lucky we live in a moderate country, right? Rest of the world, they have a tornado, an earthquake, thousands dead, homes destroyed, large-scale devastation. We in Britain, we have a tornado. Well, two chimney pots cracked, one cat missing, one frozen chicken looted from Iceland. <laughs> well done, Andy Parson. The point's over to Ed and Andy. <laughs> Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Alan, which category would you like? Nature. Please. OK, your category is <coughs> nature. The answer is sparrows, otters and hedgehogs. What is the question? 
What does Hugh Fernley Whittingstall's breath smell of? <laughs> <laughs> what is the least popular Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavor? <laughs> what is the top selling porn mag in Norfolk? <laughs> Who are the entrants in Simon Cowell's new TV show, The Woodlands Got Talent? <laughs> <laughs> Name three of the deadliest gangs in Royal Tunbridge Wells. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, as a child, what did I dress in military uniforms to reenact the Battle of Stalingrad, <laughs> the German forces being played by a lawnmower? <laughs> <laughs> And you got the correct answer? According what, to... What's been put... What's recently been put on the endangered species list? That's absolutely yes, right. Well done, Ed Brown. Congratulations. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for is name three endangered species on a recently updated government list. On the list are over a thousand plants and animals, a number that has doubled in the last decade. Significant new additions include hedgehogs, house sparrows and salmon. Why are they becoming endangered now? Any ideas? Because they can't find them. That's it. It's not because... Well, no, it is, basically. The, the f field mice, there's a field mouse that's the size of a 2P, and they've gone, no, nah, we can't find them. I reckon they, the mice just react in the same way we do when we see people with clipboards, you know, trying to get charity like that, going, oh, there they are, hi. <laughs> they've gone, party time, party time for the mice. <laughs> they do reckon it's tidy gardens, don't they? They reckon that yeah. gardens are too tidy, so sparrows, otters and hedgehogs are all... They're, they're, they're dying, but really, they should just move. Because there's some really shitty gardens, isn't there? There's <laughs> gardens that are overgrown where they could have a fridge and a mattress as well, if they really thought about it on some estates. You're, you're right, it, it, it is short-sightedness on behalf of the audience. Maybe it's time yeah. for them to get on the property ladder and have their own gardens. <laughs> <laughs> animals are just rubbish. Like, they're not doing well in Britain. Let's give another needy animal a shot at making it in this country. You know, every time a, a sparrow dies, we should replace it with a crocodile. <laughs> You hit one of those in your car, hey, you've got a lovely pair of trousers. <laughs> There's a lot of animals that are, and not just in Britain, but that are on the endangered species list that kind of deserve to be. Like pandas, giant pandas, yes, they're very cute and all that. But the reason they're endangered is because they won't have sex with each other, which is a crap reason to be endangered. If you can't be arsed humping yourself off the endangered species list, then you're not worth saving. Do you know what they did? So you know, they years ago, there'll be a practice as pandas. We gave them every chance. Uh, <laughs> the pandas want to die. The pandas want to die out, and we're forcing them to have sex. <laughs> Imagine that in your deathbed, some zookeeper's trying to make you hump someone. <laughs> I can. <laughs> <laughs> Bad yeah. extinction, is it? <laughs> I mean, it's less stuff to have to learn to teach your kids. Yeah. What's that, Daddy? Well, it's a dog, cos there's only dogs left. <laughs> <laughs> Could be like them. Yeah. They're easy to keep going. Uh, I'm not allowed to kill anything. I live, I've moved out of the country now, and my missus won't let me kill anything. Because something else well, always eats right, it. When, you, when you're in the middle of the city, she yeah. allowed you to go out and kill yeah. it. <laughs> Found a tramp. It wasn't a problem. Ed, Ed, well, that's what I wanted. I'd taken and killed him. And the annoying the is... want to die! <laughs> I tell you what is bizarre, have you said... That because it's basically it's just Darwinism and the animals are changing to adapt to us. Have you seen what um, birds in the city now apparently sometimes mistake car, horn, car horns and ringtones for mating calls? Mm. Which is just hilarious, just the idea of some poor bird. The next time you honk your car, basically you're turning on a bird. <laughs> you know? Just this bird flying over, going, you're right, lads, I'm in love. What does she sound like? A little bit like, na 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 Isn't part of the problem, though, is that more and more people have got cats, and they're yes. killing all of the little creatures. <laughs> yes. My next-door neighbour's cats, they come over, kill all the little things in my garden, and then do a shit. <laughs> Your neighbour goes, oh, it's all right, they're marking their territory. And I'm thinking, it's not its territory. It's my territory. I shouldn't have to have a crap in my own garden just to keep the cat out. If their cat's going to come into my garden and have a crap, I should go into their bloody kitchen have a crap in their cat tray. <laughs> I, I, I have two cats and they, they do, they murder everything. And, they, and then they bring everything back, like, there is a flip side. They bring, and even if they haven't quite murdered it, and, like, stuff you'd expect, you know, mice and birds, but frogs. Like, I've often, I've, I've been interrupted. I watch the television and I hear this, ah, yeah! 
which is the sound of a distressed oh, frog. Yeah, Frogs yeah, yeah. make horrible noises. They scream, don't they? They do. Totally scream. Oh, it's really, really evil, high pitched kind of thing. It and, like, a bit it's, it's a weird diorama. You walk out, like, and there's a frog screaming for its life, and a cat looking at you in kind of a, yeah. Uh, <laughs> go back to the Sopranos. <laughs> there's nothing to see here. <laughs> That frog sounded a bit like Amy Winehouse. Hmm? That frog sounded a bit like Amy Winehouse. Do it again. Yeah. They're trying to make me go. <laughs> Which is better, cats or dogs? Now, to me, it should be fairly obvious. Imagine guide cats for the blind. <laughs> That'd be rubbish, wouldn't it? You know, crawling up fences, walking along walls, <laughs> hiding under parked cars. <laughs> Up the blind people right up. <laughs> I was in the shop and they would just lose interest and fall asleep. I did a, <laughs> I did a ter terrible thing in Australia. There was a bloke and it was, I saw the dog. I didn't realise he was a guide dog and I had some chocolate on me. So I kind of went, yeah, I don't know. flung it and just saw this poor bloke go. <laughs> 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 felt a little bit bad. <laughs> I once, uh, my girlfriend had a dog and I shaved all its hair off as a spaniel. And then I, I laid all the hair out on the ground. Oh, my God. Like, it was just a sort of flattened thing. Like that. <laughs> and when she came back, I went, bit of an accident. <laughs> <laughs> she left me not long after that. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, are we getting close to the truth as to where all these animals are now going? Yeah. <laughs> Roaming the country, uh, creating she dioramas. She, she must have gone mental. She to burst that. into tears yeah. and then left me about two weeks later, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks later, when she came back, they only got three legs. She thought, yeah. that's it. <laughs> I, I should go now, but he'll be. I, I go now, Frankie, but he'll be freezing. <laughs> In political news, who's been getting tough on crime this week? The A team. 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 The Yes, David Cameron, you're right. Yeah. He's way? another of it. Well, because he's, he's panicking that there might be an election. Yeah. And so he's just throwing out policies willy yeah. nilly. He's in, think of a new policy every 15 minutes. <laughs> On the subject of the election, he said, if you look at my leadership as a whole, like the last 18 months, for the vast majority of that, I was ahead. And that is what people will judge me on. And you've got to go, well, that's, that's not the way it works. Uh, you can't go, well, we were 1 0 up for 89 minutes. Uh, and, uh, two late goals that statistically are irrelevant. Uh, what does it matter what Cameron says anyway? It's like, it's like Ben Stiller saying that he's going to lower income tax or <laughs> Wayne Rooney committing more troops to Iraq. It's just that you've got to have power for it to have any sort of relevance. Absolutely. Well, he's blaming all, he's blaming video games. Well, he's yeah. saying, he, and rap music as well. I think it's difficult for David Cameron to tell kids not to listen to hip-hop when we all suspect he really likes Enya. <laughs> You can, you can overdo this old violent films goes to, you know, people copy violent films, because surely, in which case, people would also copy non-violent films. Surely, if that's the case, you could go along to King's Cross, stand in between platforms 9 and 10, <laughs> and watch little kids running up, <laughs> smacking their head on the pillars, desperately trying to find platform 9 and 3 quarters. <laughs> well, it is funny probably... when they do that, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Try harder! Try harder! <laughs> You're just not believing enough! <laughs> You've given yourself the mark, though. <laughs> it's this whole thing, isn't it, where they're trying to control role models and they're talking about role models for black kids and, and so on. You think, well, kids choose bad role models. That's what they do, they look up to idiots. I mean, who's the role models for white kids? Wayne Rooney. <laughs> I mean, he's going to finish his contract at Man U and then be released into the wild. <laughs> Papers are, papers are full of all this obscene stuff that his girlfriend buys him. He'd be happy with just a tire on a rope. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hugh and Alan. <laughs> now we've come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could all make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Things an athletics commentator would never say. There's a white man in the final of the 100 metres. Good luck with that. <laughs> that man runs like a panther. 
And if he could learn to use just two legs, he'd be absolutely <laughs> unbeatable. <laughs> and I've got to say, it's a surprise. Yes, the winner of the marathon are four blokes tied together dressed as Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> this should be a laugh. Women running. <laughs> Lane one, the UK. Lane two, the USA. Lane three, closed for resurfacing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here come the walkers now, mincing their way into the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> and in this final of the women's gymnastics, I've been nailed to my chair for my own good. <laughs> Can someone get the door, please? I'm commentating. <laughs> Tragedy in the water polo as most of the horses drown. <laughs> and the urine sample appears to have melted the beaker. <laughs> That's not a good sign. <laughs> and in the end, it took a photograph to separate them. The one of him shagging a pole dancer in Nevada. <laughs> And in the slow motion replay, you can quite clearly see his cock swinging from side to side. <laughs> the next topic is the worst thing to say when running for US president. I intend to withdraw from Iraq, invade some real pussies like Spain. <laughs> Honey, I'm like George Bush, only less intelligent. <laughs> I will never forget the terrible events of 912. <laughs> <clears throat> now I know what you're thinking. A Sagittarius for president, but I have Leo rising. <laughs> 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 mm. <laughs> yes, I smoked marijuana and I inhaled just now. <laughs> There are no skeletons in my closet, <laughs> just a black latex dildo suit. I would like you to call me <laughs> President Shawada Wada. I have a magnificent war record. It's Pipes of Peace by Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you that. Oh, I got a bad one. Okay, bad one. Uh, well, in psychology, I did experiment w with marijuana. I did it in snow, I did it in sleet, but I did not inhale. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Russell, Ed and Andy! <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Alan Cochran. Congratulations to Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne, and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Gary Green. Good night. Next here on BBC Two, Tommy Saxondale, the councillor. At ten, the BAFTA-winning Mitchell and Webb, and Russell Howard is on Six Music on Sunday mornings at ten. Meanwhile, Hugh Dennis is back and doing battle with his kids, outwitted and outnumbered, at 10.35 on BBC One.